I would like to uh, remind uh, every one of ourselves here to take a moment and cultivate uh, the highest uh, form of motivation. We call it uh, bodhicitta motivation or the altruistic motivation, seeking complete enlightenment for the benefit of all other sentient beings. And with that kind of motivation, 
we should all participate uh, in this uh, Lamrim discourse, discourse on the stages of path leading to enlightenment by Manjushri Lama Tsongkhapa. <coughs> Allow me to read about uh, a page two uh, from this uh, Lamrim uh, Chemo, uh, the great treatise on the stages of path enlightenment uh, uh, to give you the blessing of uh, lineage oral transmission uh, followed by uh, explication. We are in volume number three in the English translation of uh, Lamrim Chemo, uh, page uh, um, 203. It's not called 203, but it is 203. Uh, you know, those of you who have a text. Sundayana Tiwati Zimbabwe Chitisitayamate, <laughs> Timmy 
这老张西也把我一弄，吃个没呀，把我吃个吃个没把我把我吃个毛多把张西也把我一把，然后就这把一那张西别对一别自己自己。今夜嘛，我看见把第二日日我嘛也弄，先是我送不得媳妇烧，啊，媳妇烧我第一时日也弄过没呢？嗯，老阿妹那个没个别，搞了多多吃饭，多多多吃，我因为没有因为，搞着就是别叫我们不我媳妇呢，他一直吃个怎么了？上班值班呢？ रिपोर्टों में लव जी का जो खाना यहाँ तुझे मार्शल तुझे मार्शल शिंदू शिंदू ये ये शिंदू पक्षी मावा इंडी रंग ये ये ना गामे ये ना गाम रंग ये ना गामे ने बामे ना गामे को बेचूंगी मैं तेरे पारु बाव करो जी जब बसे बाव गो बाव जी गो शिंदू गो जो भी गो जो चाह में ये बात जो भी चल Jutsi ma kui pa tiye chong pa ru pa ka tru shao kui pa tiye pa la wa ka pa la shao wa me re te yu na ka me nu la me na ka a me kui pe shero. Rik pa me ya ya rik pa taan pe pe go go pa ni ji pe shin ju la ka tru pe pe to pa nto pe shin yin la. Rik pe tru pa ni shin ju ma la pe nge pa ji pe pe ta yu min pe pe shin ju la ka lo na lo na nto pa ra nte pa ta nga shin ju ma lo pe. लोने के बाद देवा वो देवे लुटो वो लोग से बेरे बे बे चौजी बे जिस जाने का दोजी जे वो तो चीज़ ये मालूम बंगे बे बे लो जे बर शाओ ताकि हम तो दिखने तुम दिख तब देरे तो वो लग दो गाजर चाप चाप बे शुआं ये दे दो साल ताते जो रोज़ साल शुरू दे दे ती दो साल ता ता ती ना ता ती ने बा ऐने ता ता गाजर चाप चाप दा चाप शुआं दो याद खाने शुआं रसे ना इन्हें ते गाजर चे दे लोग बामाजे गाजर चे दे गाजर से जोने राशि चुवा इस दे गाजर से जोने अन्य कर जैसा ते मार्टो वेंडर राशि ये मार्टो वेंडर से इन्हें गाजर चे लोग बामु मासी इंसा इन ते लते इन ता ता से गाजर चाप चाप दा चाप uh, I guess I'll read from uh, page two or three uh, to page uh, two or six, uh, volume number three in the English translation of uh, Lamrin Chemo, the great treatise on the stage of the path. And um, <coughs> uh, so as Krishna has uh, started to explain, um, uh, this a while back, uh, uh, that uh, we talked about uh, the um, importance of uh, uh, recognizing uh, the object of negation, what is to be negated uh, uh, to understand uh, uh, the ultimate uh, nature of things. And with regard to that, uh, you know, we uh, talked about uh, the true extreme cases of uh, identifying the object of negation. Uh, one is uh, overestimation of the object of negation. In other words, uh, you know, we <clears throat> have, uh, you know, uh, uh, talked about uh, how in certain uh, school of thought, uh, what they regard as the uh, object of negation is too broad. So you are negating too much, isn't it? So that is a problem. You know, you're overdoing it, you know. Uh, but then in some other school of thought, uh, the problem we have located is that what they consider as object of negation is not negating enough. You know, so those are the two extremes. Either you're overdoing it or you're underdoing it, you know. And so why uh, it is such a challenge to be able to uh, be free of these two uh, extreme cases of identifying the object of negation uh, is, as Gishala explained, uh, uh, because in both cases uh, they have, uh, uh, so to speak, failed uh, to precisely identify what must be negated or refuted. Right? We really need a precision there. You know? Lacking that precision, they have either negated too much or they have not negated enough. So, in other words, not doing a good job, right? to speak in an American way. So they're not doing a <coughs> good job there. Geshe-la didn't say that, by the way. <coughs> and uh, so, if that's the case, uh, then of course uh, uh, the, uh, the opponents can ask us, right? okay, now you tell me. <laughs> 
uh, you know, what precisely is the object of negation in your school of thought? You know, advance your thesis, your position here. What precisely is the object of negation? So that's why on page three, uh, we have those outlines. Those of you who got the text in your hand, uh, uh, it says, how our system identifies the object of negation, and that has a three uh, uh, a sub point. The first one is called the actual identification of the object to be negated. What precisely is the object that is to be negated or refuted, right, in our own school of thought? Jormuzi <laughs> Uh, so with regard to this, uh, the issue or the topic uh, pertaining to uh, identifying the object of negation or object of refutation, there are three things we need to deal with. The first one is what actually is uh, the object of negation? What is it precisely? Tell me. Okay, so that uh, needs to be dealt with. The second one is uh, in many debates uh, about this issue or the topic, uh, you know, uh, the, the, there is what we call qualifying terms being added. So what? So when to add those qualifying terms to the other objects of negation? Yeah, that's another uh, related point we have to deal with. And the third point is uh, that often in uh, arguments pertaining to this topic, uh, the technical term that often we hear is uh, ultimate, right? Paramartha uh, in Sanskrit, or the tendam, tendam in Tibetan. So when uh, you know, do we add this qualifying term ultimate to the object of negation? So these are the three uh, different uh, sub points uh, that we have to uh, deal with. You know. <laughs> You <laughs> The <laughs> Mingi 
Uh, so Gisho's explanation pertains to uh, the passages you find on page 203 at the bottom and over page 204 on the top. Um, so now we um, started to talk about uh, the first uh, uh, sub point, uh, which is the actual identification of the object to be negated. What is it precisely, right? And um, uh, so uh, relating to that, uh, uh, what is uh, uh, described here, as I explained, uh, that we should understand that there are two types of uh, object of negation, if you will. Objects of negation by path, spiritual path, and objects of negation by reasoning or rationality, okay, rational analysis. So those are the two types of object of negation. Objects of negation by path, spiritual development, these objects of negation do exist, and they must exist. Uh, so what are they, if you ask? Uh, so this really refers to, uh, for example, the two types of uh, mental uh, obscuration. Uh, we call delusive uh, obscuration, afflictive emotions, or kalesia, nyonmong in Tibetan. And then obscuration to omniscient knowledge, uh, we call it uh, uh, cognitive obscuration, or shidip, right? These two types of obscuration, uh, they exist. That's why we experience uh, anger, uh, attachment, lust, uh, jealousy, pride, you just name it. You know, All of those things we experience, these do exist. And these are the objects of negation by a spiritual path. Why do we need to cultivate spiritual path or the antidote? Because these things exist and they are troubling our life, isn't it? And uh, so if they things don't exist, then that means we are free of all these delusions. We are already liberated or already Buddha, which is not the case, isn't it? The reason why uh, all of us are bound in the, or go round and round in samsaric existence, samsara, is because of these afflictive emotions. They keep us within samsara. They don't let us get free. So we need to cultivate spiritual path and antidotes to be able to counteract them so counteract them means they really exist so that you can counteract them and get rid of them, right? So those are the objects of negation by path. We call it uh, Lamji Gaksha in Tibetan, and they exist, okay? Now the second type of object of negation is object of negation by reasoning or rational analysis. Rigbe uh, Gaksha in Tibetan. Rigba means uh, rationality, reasoning, okay? And these objects of negation do not exist, and they must not exist. Uh, are you with me so far? Okay. Uh, and um, so, um, uh, what is it? Um, uh, referring to great Indian master Arya Nagarjuna's uh, uh, refutation of objections, Zhendo in Tibetan, uh, the treatise, uh, uh, that's on, page, on top of page 204. Uh, so we discussed that. So what is this uh, object of negation by reasoning that does not exist? Uh, so Nagarjuna's uh, uh, refutation of the objections plus the auto-commentary is uh, uh, cited uh, on page 204, <coughs> and as Geshe explained, uh, that uh, um, let's say uh, the example given is uh, if um, uh, you know, someone magically created a, 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 a beautiful a lady, okay, call her emanation, a lady emanation here, right? And uh, then some people see her, and she's so beautiful that you just kind of uh, get obsessed with her. She's so attractive and beautiful, and I just want to you know, connect with her. I want to have a relationship. You just go berserk in all your mind. But in reality, she's not a real woman. She's a magical creation. She's an emanation, isn't it? Okay. 
And the only way you can help people are so obsessed with that uh, lady, beautiful, is like, you know what? She's not real. Okay? So you are going so banana about her, but she's not even real. It's just an illusion uh, magically created. Okay? So once we know that, okay, she's not a real, so I really can't get attached to something which I thought is a real woman, beautiful. Uh, then you are able to deal with that, uh, your emotional uh, feelings and attachment to the lady, isn't it? So in this particular case, you know, it's not that through reasoning we are trying to, uh, how should I say, uh, refute the existence of something. It's through reasoning we are trying to establish what, what is not existent in the first place, isn't it? What is not existent in the first place is a real woman. She is... Uh, Okay, I have to be careful. I don't, shouldn't use the word fake here, right? Because we have so many problems with the fake thing here. <laughs> this is. She, she's an illusory woman, you know? Okay, she is a magically created woman who looks like a beautiful woman, talks like a woman, acts like a woman, behaves like a woman, but she's not real, you know? So if you think she's real and I want to have a relationship with her, but you really goofed. I have to tell you the truth, she is not real. But knowing that through through whatever reasoning, you can establish that she's not real, then that helps the people who, you know, are so obsessed to her to deal with, you know, get real. She's not real, okay? Uh, so this example is used to establish the point that the object of negation by reasoning is something that does not exist in the first place. The only thing reasoning can do, rational analysis can do, is to uh, demonstrate that this is something non-existent. Okay? Uh, it's just from the beginning. It's not like through reasoning we become too smart and too clever and too sneaky and then we kind of uh, refute the existence of something that exists. That's not the case. Something does not exist right from the beginning. We are just simply <laughs> you know, using the rationality saying, say, you know what? Hey, open your eyes. This is not real. Okay? Uh, so those are the two types of object of negation uh, we have to uh, differentiate from one another. Object of negation by path exists. This in Shaw refers to uh, two types of mental obscuration, afflictive emotions, cognitive obscuration. And object of negation by reasoning, they really don't exist, and they should not exist. You know. <laughs> Uh, so we are on, in the middle of page uh, 204. Um, so of two types of object of negation, here uh, we are really primarily focused on the object of negation by reasoning or rational analysis. Okay? And in this case, as we already said, that object of negation is something that doesn't exist right, at all. And it's through rational analysis of reasoning, we are simply demonstrating that it, is, it does not exist in reality, right? And that's how we are able to eradicate uh, misconceptions, misapprehensions that exist in our mind pertaining to whatever that X, Y, Z is, okay? Uh, and as Geshe explained, again, in this particular case, uh, we have to look at it uh, 
uh, from the objective uh, point of view and the subjective point of view. Yeah. And uh, from objective point of view, there is no intrinsic reality. So that is the object of negation. It does not exist. It's not like we become too smart and through reasoning and analysis, you know, uh, we kind of, uh, uh, how should I say, uh, destroy the existence of intensive reality. That's not the case. Intensive reality does not exist from the beginning, period. Okay? Uh, but that is uh, from the objective point of view. So even though uh, things don't exist intrinsically, but the issue we have is we have grasping at the intrinsic reality. From subjective point of view, you know, we are messed up, right? <laughs> well, Gisela didn't say that again, right? Uh, so that's why we have to talk about this. Why do we have to discuss that there is no such things as intrinsic reality? Because we are still stuck in this misconception that things do exist intrinsically. So from subjective point of view, we are goofed here, right? And so the only way we can... Uh, uh, we can, uh, how should I say, uh, recognize and get rid of our misconceptions is only when we look at, right, uh, uh, at, uh, at the realities as, uh, as it is, as they are. So when we are demonstrated, it is demonstrated to us through reasoning that there is no such thing as intrinsic reality or intrinsic truth, then we are able to say, oh, if there is no intense reality, I still have grasping the intense reality. So that grasping, that uh, awareness, uh, that consciousness must be a distorted consciousness. The Tibetan term is lokta, right? You know, we have a lot of valid perceptions of consciousness, valid in the sense that these have, you know, objects that are legit. But then we also have wrong conceptions where, in which case, the objects they're engaged in don't exist at all. So this kind of misconception which we have, uh, you know, pertaining to insensitive reality, uh, that misconception, that apprehension is a distorted perception or wrong perception. Uh, I will stick with the Tibetan term, lokta, which seems more powerful than, say, wrong, uh, you know, uh, Cardatizo, ตัวผมบ่ชีบตัวเมยเมบะเมบะงอชีบิงิชิเจบะเจเมบะงิบะเจบะนะยอบะเจบิตุยดอบะยินอสเจตะติละยังโกกาสเซคาริกาวะเอ
being described in the Buddhist literatures, you know, uh, how to, uh, how should I say, uh, to establish that things exist dependently. Things are uh, dependent in nature. That uh, The Sanskrit term, as you know, is a pratit samudpat, dental in Tibetan, right? Everything exists interdependently or dependently existent. Okay? Uh, and so among many different reasons, uh, sometimes we talk about five types of reasonings, and among them, the, you know, often the, the one uh, which is referred to as the, the most effective uh, uh, reasoning is uh, the reasoning of uh, dependent arising, okay? or the pratit samudpat, or or relativity, perhaps. Um, and um, uh, so as uh, you know, Gisela explained earlier, and again here uh, uh, it's mentioned, uh, that uh, <coughs> the object of negation by reasoning, in this particular case, that object does not exist and should not exist. If it were to exist, then we would not be able to refute it through reasoning. Okay? Uh, because it doesn't exist, so what the reasoning or the rational analysis is simply doing is simply demonstrating the fact that we are grasping at something that does not exist at all, right? Uh, and uh, so that object of negation uh, is non-existent, right? Uh, the, the terminology uh, that's used in the Buddhist uh, science of mind is called shenyur, the referent object of the object that's being grasped at, you know? Uh, so that object of uh, referent object uh, uh, you know, does not uh, uh, exist at all. And then, of course, we can ask the question, well, if it doesn't exist, if intensive reality doesn't exist, so, so what's the big deal then? Well, the big deal is, in our minds, we have a lot of misconceptions about uh, uh, that reality. Okay? And that's why we are stuck. The reason why uh, we are stuck in samsara, a problematic situation, and the reason why we are not yet Buddha is partly because of these misconceptions and graspings that exist in our mind, and many of them really have no real objects of their own. But we still, we are grasping at something that doesn't exist. Remember, when we talk about misconceptions, it could include uh, uh, how should I say, grasping at something that does not exist, isn't it? Something that doesn't exist, but we somehow believe that it exists. Well, which is a problem, isn't it? So this is the case of that. Things don't exist intrinsically. There is no such thing as intrinsic reality. But somehow we believe very wholeheartedly at the bottom of our mind that things do exist that way. So that misconception is holding us back in samsara. That's not letting us free, you know, from samsara. That's not letting us to be a Buddha enlightened, you know. And uh, so, uh, through reasoning, uh, you know, if we can simply demonstrate to our mind that. Things don't exist intrinsically, but yet we are grasping at something, rather, you know, at that. And that grasping, uh, you know, needs to be, uh, uh, how should I say, eradicated, you know. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> so that's the, uh, uh, that's the point uh, uh, being made here. Because we don't want to keep that grasping, but that grasping is what we call lokshe, distorted perception or wrong consciousness. Right? Wrong consciousness is defined as uh, consciousness awareness of, uh, 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 awareness pertaining to something that is non-existent being perceived as existent. Well, that's a that's a lock share, you know. Oh, this is not taking the request of a someone you could tell the woman said she said to a man you should be him to the evil him or more she was here and you should give her you know still it all comes in that 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 the end of cars it comes in and it ก็จะพักกายอาทิตย์ก็ชื่อดูยาจีนอยู่หรอวะเชื่อสภาพกายอาทิตย์ก็เรื่องนั้นพอเย็นพอพูดว่าท้อจะมันอะไรแม่บ
so we are uh, doing two things here. One is uh, we are refuting uh, intrinsic reality or true true existence, right? Then do true existence, intrinsic reality, Rangshinji Duba. I'm trying to use the Tibetan terms, those who keep track of those uh, technical terms, right? Um, and it's through reasoning we are trying to demonstrate that there is no such thing as intrinsic mm -hmm. reality, isn't it? Intrinsic reality is non-existence. That's what we're simply showing it, demonstrate uh, through uh, the reasoning. On the other hand, we are affirming the absence of intrinsic reality or the emptiness of intrinsic reality, isn't it? So emptiness of intrinsic reality is simply affirmed because that's how things you know, the, exist, actually. It's not a... Uh, you know, by affirming it does not mean that we are, sim we are uh, creating a new reality here, right? In the case of example, I shall give, uh, let's say, um, um, like so the, the farmers, okay? So they're doing the, the har uh, how should I say, uh, the, the right season, they will plant the seeds, they will nurture the seeds, and then at the, at the end of the day, they have a good harvest. That's a creation, isn't it? Uh, but absence of uh, intense reality is not a new creation, like through reasoning. You know, we become too smart that we created new reality. That's not what it is. Through reason, again, we are simply affirming that, you know, what is already there, which is the absence of intrinsic reality. So there are two things happening. On the one hand, we are refuting intrinsic reality through reasoning. On the other hand, we are affirming the absence of intrinsic reality, right? Uh, the, almost like the true side of the same coin. He didn't use that metaphor. I'm I, I, the translator using it, right? Yeah. Uh, as I said, I gave this example of um, you know, somebody uh, who has a, maybe a serious case of a jaundice. I hope that's the right translation of the Tibetan <laughs> sickness called this, uh, you know, where you see things uh, yellow, you know. Anyway, so it's a very serious case of jaundice. And such a person, if he looks at the snow mountain, he sees the mountain as yellow, okay? Now somebody can correct him, you know what? Snow is always white. It's never yellow, you know? You should know that. There's no such thing as a yellow snow. You may be seeing it because of your perception as a health condition, but in reality, it's white. So the person who demonstrated that, that person is not making the snow white. He's just simply saying snow is always white, you know. I'm just telling you that, you know. So through that, even this person, he's saying, okay, because of my health condition, I'm seeing it. Because in reality, snow is white, right? So you get corrected, your misconception. So in the same way here, we're doing the same thing uh, that, um, you know, um, in reality, there is nothing uh, that exists intrinsically, right? And everything is uh, absent of intrinsic reality or absence of intrinsic existence. And through reasoning and rational analysis, we are simply pointing to that fact, demonstrating. So this is simply called establishing emptiness, isn't it? So what is already there we are simply introducing ourselves to that reality and demonstrating it. We are not newly creating a, a phenomenon called emptiness, you know, because it's so cool, right? No, you're not creating anything new. This is not artificial reality, you know. This is what it is, you know, and you are just simply being introduced uh, 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 to that fact. So when we introduce to that, then help us to be able to uh, um, understand, at least intellectually at this point, that, oh, Things really don't exist the way they appear to me, right? They appear to me intrinsically, but in reality, they don't exist in that way, right? So that helps us at least to understand uh, the reality intellectually, and then, of course, uh, uh, you know, later we might gain the direct insight into it. <coughs> Gobert 
so at the bottom of page uh, 204 and over page 205, uh, we have a uh, you know, citation from uh, Nagarjuna's uh, refutation of uh, objections. And the point that's being made there, as Krishna explained, is that when we uh, deal with the theory of emptiness, right, trying to establish emptiness, uh, we come across uh, statements or expressions such as uh, you know, absence of intrinsic reality. Right? Things don't exist, things lack intrinsic reality. So these expressions are simply used to demonstrate the fact that there isn't such reality, isn't it? It's not like these expressions have created uh, the absence of intrinsic reality. If we say that, uh, in other words, how should I say it? The technical term we use is emptiness of intrinsic reality. The statement or the term emptiness of intrinsic reality does not create this new reality called emptiness, isn't it? It's just simply a way of communicating right, what the actual reality is. So these expressions, the words we use, the statements we use are by way of communicating what the reality is. These expressions do not create a new reality called emptiness. You know? These, uh, uh, how do you say, Expressions do not uh, negate uh, intrinsic reality, you know. So, so uh, I mean, that's what's being uh, stated in Nagarjuna's uh, uh, refutation of objections. Oh. <coughs> so on page uh, 205, uh, <coughs> more at the top, uh, uh, from uh, Nagarjuna's auto commentary on the refutation of objections, uh, another example is being given. Uh, let's say uh, there is uh, some kind of a uh, like conversation between two individuals. Right? Somebody is looking for Mr. Devdada. Okay? Devdada is, by the way, a male, so I have to call Mr. Devdada, right? <laughs> And uh, because somebody suspects that maybe Dev Dada is in your house, so I'm looking for him. So he asks, like, you know, I think Dev Dada is in your house. The other person is wondering, well, no, he's not in my house. So the person who says he's not in my house, he's simply offering a clarification response, right? But saying that Dev Dada is not in my house is not the thing that, how should I say, uh, that makes the Dev Dada absent in his house, isn't it? Dev Dada is simply not in his house. He's simply clarifying that. Well, he's not in my house, you know, or he left already or whatever. But those statements, the person is not, how should I say, knocking off the existence of Dev Dada in the house. He, it's just simply telling what it is, the truth, right? It's a matter of communication, right? What is not there? You know? it's, so it's the same thing with uh, uh, absence of intensive reality. When we say that uh, there is no intensive reality or things are empty of intensive reality, these expressions are not making emptiness what it is. Emptiness is what emptiness is. These expressions are simply clarifying, you know, what is or what is not. Oh, this is a that you say that teacher do go over that to that is a teacher do go over Rashi mentioned mentioned you in a teaching channel you because I mentioned you teaching the move 
那么热心没多些小啊，吃这样。我不能热心没问题，小啊，没问题。这我在热心没多些的上，他不我不热心也不行。但热心没多些的上，你搞热心没把这个多点的买的话是。我是我不他是热心没把几百几不得几不样子没我的车哇，嗯，我热的呢。You must not hear it, regular quite a race, the Chua. No, 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 मैं बांग चुक मारता हूँ यार रंशी वाला मैं वो रात जो बाई है ना रंशी में तो इस जगह चुक दी जी की शादी शाह कहीं बाती रिबा में नो शेष वाला सुख बता शेष वाला शाह वाला और तेरे ताने ते ताता कह रहे हैं तो को रंशी था वो मैंने ना ना मैं लगवा रहा हूँ मरा सेना शिवा सुजू अंदर से तो शेड इन्हें तो रंजी यो मारे से नहीं इन्हें तो केबात तो कोई नहीं तो सारी चीजों ने देंगे ऊपर इन्हें ती कर से कितने काते जो गंगा सेंधे गंगा लोग सुनिए रब्जू शियारे में किसी इन्हें को रंजी जो तंबो ये वाले इन्हें सांझे दा दी जिंजू के इन्हें चांजू से बात तो 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 इन्हें पिक न्यामने रुप से the last passage quoted from Nagarjuna's auto commentary on page uh, 205. And um, so what Geshala has explained uh, is this, uh, then when such an expression or statement is made that uh, there is, uh, is no intrinsic reality, this is not a case where intrinsic reality existed earlier and now when you make later the statement, there is not intensive reality. This statement somehow, how should I say, uh, refutes uh, the existence of intensive reality. This is statement is simply clarifying the fact that there has never been anything uh, that uh, has existed intensive reality. Yeah. Um, uh, and uh, so if that's the case, then somebody can say, you know, okay, so why you are just kind of hammering on me that there is no intensive reality? It's, it's something doesn't exist, so just... Give me a break. So why you keep repeating there's not intensive reality, there's not intensive reality, there's absence of intensive reality. <laughs> you know, I'm not a stupid, you know. You already said it many times. So, okay, so, okay, I got it. There isn't it. So why you are barking on me, at me all this time, right? But the thing is that we, the childish sentient beings, because of our ignorance, thank you for the avitya, you know, marigba, it superimposes a reality that does not exist on phenomena. Even though things don't exist intrinsically, our ignorance is doing a fantastic job. You know, it superimposes on that, then and then we get goofed and we believe in that. Well, that's how it exists. That's the problem. Why somebody's yapping at us? No intensive reality, absence of intensive reality, because still in the bottom of our heart, we believe that things do exist that way. Okay, so that's why, as long as we have that kind of a belief system in us that things exist in intrinsically, thanks to the ignorance, then we get stuck. We are never going to be liberated. We are never going to be Buddha. Right? So if we want to be liberated and be Buddha, then you know, we should be introduced to the fact that there is no such thing, intensive reality, and our ignorance is superimposing that reality on the things, and we should not believe in what the ignorance is telling us. You know? Just be real here. Right? That's, the, that's the whole point of uh, having to deal with that. So this is why... Uh, Shakyamuni Buddha, uh, all the great masters, you know, who have become highly realized, right? They're simply introducing us to what it is. It's not like they become highly realized and because of their practice, they have destroyed, you know, intensive reality. There is no, nothing to be destroyed. Intensive reality doesn't exist. That's what they are telling us. It's not like by the power of their spirituality and realization, well, we destroy the intensive reality for you. That's not what it is. They're simply saying this, we goofed like you before, and then now we realize things don't exist that way, and this is where we are. And we're just telling you that, right? So, uh, so that's what we find in the auto commentary. Oh, 
खोई दाटे वाची वो रहवा दाटे नहीं गोवा खा रही हो रहा है ना कैसे हो रहा है रहवा गांसो तब सिंजे था जब तो हम में वाले ने दुगने बुके ना दिया कि ता सवा जब खर्च तो वो रहा है ना इन्हें वाटी रोशी में वाले में वाले वो मार्चे शे अन को दें तो सुनते तो तेरे दें इन्हें दूसरा इन सांझे की तेंदुए से आसुम ना रात्रि से है रेस रवा बच्चे से उड़ता कर सा तो ना तेंदुए तो बच्चे जो इसी का से बच्चे तेंदुए नहीं ले चाम दे जो थे नांगे दे जो थे हिंजु में से क्या लगे इस इन सांझे के शो कांडे सुन भी ना तेंदुए तो या था दूध रोशन तो कांडे तो यू तो या था दाल प So what we have been discussing based on what is described in the textbook is there is no such thing as intrinsic reality, right? And through reasoning, we are not trying to destroy intrinsic reality. It's through reasoning we are simply introduced and demonstrated to the fact, you know, there is no intrinsic reality. Okay? And why, you know, we really need to pay serious attention to this and understand this is otherwise in our mind and heart, we strongly believe this is how things exist, isn't it? And because of that belief system, which is a misconception that we are stuck in samsara, where there's a lot of suffering and we don't want to be here anymore, okay? And if we want to get rid of uh, that, uh, how should I say, misconception and be liberated from samsara, then we really have to deal with this issue, right? There is no intensive reality, yeah? And uh, so that's why um, Shakyamuni Buddha has uh, you know, taken the pains to explain to us that things are dependent arising, but it's samudpa, right? Things exist dependently, interdependently, you know? And uh, so Buddha has gone a long way, as Geshe-la has tried to recall f uh, th from his memory. That's what called uh, in praise of the dependent arising, tendetupa, right? And he quoted the beautiful lines, which I can't do in English, you know? <laughs> so give me a break. Uh, but, uh, um, <laughs> and but uh, the explanation given is is that whatever Buddha has taught, say so it is, it explicitly or implicitly points to the fact that things are empty of intrinsic reality. The reason for that is because Buddha wants us to be able to uh, experience uh, the peace of nirvana, isn't it? That's Buddha's whole goal. Buddha wants us to be free from samsara and be liberated, and to get there, we must realize absence of intrinsic reality. So all his teachings explicitly or implicitly, you know, try to demonstrate uh, to that fact of the reality. So he's telling us that things are dependently existent, nothing exists intrinsically, and uh, just know that, <laughs> you know. Oh, this is because of teaching you don't go many Lamina, Gama go bata, Gaudo the Trevi, Casa, Gaudo the Treva Yimbe, Gaudo Jiriguchiva Mongo Shivani, Tanya Zan Tanya Sil and German Javani, Rigba the Lamni Gaja Kana Yang, Tonji Maja or Shindu, Gendu, Baju Ma Indi, Rang Yuna Gamini by the Mena Gamu Gubi, Judin, Paulo Gaudu Shiva Shiva, Go Shindu, Gaudu. No, shaming up and do it, she said. You think you go a teacher? Parupo go to Shago and do a Gabasha meeting day. You know, government in many government with Shiro. That is what that young Kaji Tinia and Willa was. Kaji Gaw more than hundred years. Soon as Namja ten, but tiny Namja ten, she may have the Yumi, Jeba Mongosia, the Kadis and the tiny six and jumpers, the tiny six and jumps in the back. Tiny thing, one was here and here among which the jumps and the big good chabber is your wa. I didn't jump at your mother. You wanted others in that in it. God of kindness, you know, Maris. What did the lamb get your is, Roa? No, what did lamb get that carriers in the corner corner nangish out of Carzana? Corner got to see as you know, Marcel, love young and sweet in the Tony Del Baget Yellow, you got to see your mother, two Gavaja or what? Jadi kalau tu yang malas, kalau nak kawal jadi kalau nak kerja awal ni, jadi gigi pun kau cari sih orang. Hello, no, so, so, no. I think at the bottom of page two or five, 
you stated uh, that seems like a certain critique, we call it, uh, is telling uh, the proponents of uh, uh, the emptiness of philosophy uh, that, you know, you guys suck too much. And you get into all these minutiae details about the analytical analysis of this and that, and then you throw all this like a smart terms at us, like you know, emptiness of intensive reality, the absence of intensive reality, the true existence, emptiness, all these things. He said, you know what? That only tells me that you are just smart, you know, in dealing with the terms and the, you know, the, 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 how should I say, the communication part. He said, in reality, you don't need to do all of those things. You know, you don't need to make any kinds of arguments or debate about these things, right? So then the, the proponents of the emptiness said, you know what? But telling us that we should not get involved, but you're already debating with us. You know, you're telling us that you should not do, but that itself is a debate, you know? Uh, so you are kind of contradicting yourself. You're telling us we should not, you know, bother uh, like making efforts to debate and to do the refutation, but at the same time, you are already arguing with us, so that's a contradiction in, in and of itself. Oh, this was a preacher who was a teacher, he 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 was a teacher, ดอบันดอบิเชยินละริกบัตทามบัสเนริกบัยยังดาระวะเลยดาดาดังกันดูกันดูกันรู้เชยโอเมริกบันนี่เชยเวนริกบัยยังดาระกันรู้เชยอะ
And if anybody says that, you don't need that rational analysis, critical thinking, right? Um, they're missing a big point, right? They're making a big mistake. And how can you not use your critical thinking, rational analysis, you know, to deal with misconceptions and to affirm the, uh, the, 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 the correct, uh, you know, uh, perceptions? Yes. ネダンジーさんだ、ランヒトワンジョさんてるわ。あ、じゃ、シジロタでペネタ、タンキネレジンシャンのメセアンドウティレ、シジロタでシトヨマリティ。イナティナンシジロドクヨドカレニヤバタ
Any never time you never sit down at the shops or Timmy with her, not to you move your tire, you move to say, you know, you said, it's just that it's the Mongols Yoro. You're a dear, you know, that the Dangzi makes him so young, son. It did so hard to be hanged away, the Zaji is a younger year, my own mother, or Chesa, Timmy is on the Kisha and what this is over. Timmy, you got into the Zaji and the Mutu, where I don't hear that you have a conversation, the children. So, what go now and do a pink new marble cars? I make a pent of marble. Or Taranaki, any beautiful material going to control the pent of marble. You couldn't be a pen with the Nimbo Shore or this. So, so cut to the Remigi, Sajun Shong or Rawa. That does it or Tin Sunju San, any Duja Kondo Ganga to Tawa by Kaja is a Kondo Ganga Mel Sajor or Nimbo Pit, Tushia, Chapsia, Terra, or Tingla or that. So as uh, Gisela said earlier, that there are innumerable uh, misconceptions within us, but at the bottom of all of this thing, the real culprit, the real source of all other misconceptions is this misconception about intensive reality. So we really have to make every effort to identify this misconception and also its referent object, which is the intensive reality. Yeah. If we really succeed in this job, then we will be able to get rid of all other misconceptions. You know? And um, so this is so uh, crucial and important uh, because what we are talking about here is perhaps the most effective antidote to counteract all kinds of afflictive emotions. Otherwise, you know, afflictive emotions are many, and each of, it, each of the afflictive emotions has its own antidote. Right? If we deal with each of them, you know, it takes so long, isn't it? As somebody uh, for whom anger is a problem because you are so short-tempered and you're just kind of a lunatic there. Okay, so you cultivate patience. Maybe it's helping you. Well, the patience only helps you to overcome your anger, but patience doesn't help you to deal with your attachment. You know, you're still lustful and attachment, obsessively thing. Patience doesn't help you that, isn't it? Or somebody who is lustful and obsessively attached to sensual things maybe should reflect on the repulsive nature of things well, that antidote might help you to overcome your attachment, but you could still be very angry, man, isn't it? So, so all of these antidotes are specific to different afflictive emotions, but these are called partial antidotes. You, know, you deal with one, and then you have to deal with the next on its own. Whereas, if we can understand you know, the absence of intensive reality, right? that realization can cut through everything else. If we are able to uproot this grasping and intense of reality, all other delusions, attachment, anger, jealousy, pride, yuggity, yuggity, all of this will be gone altogether. So we don't have to be bothered by them because the source, the root is uprooted, isn't it? It's just like, you know, if you don't want a certain plant to be grown, take it out of the root. Then it's, it's going to dry. It's not going to grow anymore, isn't it? Uh, so th this is the same thing. So that's why it is so important. So the antidote we are talking about here to counteract our grasping intense reality uh, is a, it, it's a, what you call, it's sort of a panacea, isn't it? It, it cuts through all other uh, uh, delusions. Yes. <laughs> Simje Tabjan, the round on the picket, that got it. Carsa, long door to Carsa, that near John Dobby Tonda, any pay top on both some yards. So we are the inner, any Duja, Doya, Pesunga, Medu, Gunat, and Duja, Madame Dogmari, and the Sevago, and the Kodomo in Doto Maris, the Turks and Dush, Nimu Gangapa to Zibina, and Kondo Ganga and Chore Rejas. That demo do I did, thank you, that my use at all. Demo do I see the Kondo Ganga Jum Rudos. No, so. She had that this on the only time Nimu Tamji is our depiction already, and Tirejas in Sicily, direct Sicily, songs at the door. No, did it? No. Nimu Tata Demu Lane, Yanda Demo Yonam Songs, that Nimu is our demo song, yes. She had all that did jumps on any. So at the bottom of page uh, 206, uh, we have um, uh, a passage quoted from great Indian master Chandrakirti's uh, clear word commentary, Siksal, uh, in, in Tibetan. And the explanation has already been given. Uh, so this is uh, to substantiate the point 
where Chandagiri says that uh, Buddha has taught innumerable uh, discourses uh, to suit the dispositions and capacities of different individuals, right? Uh, and also, Buddha has recommended many different uh, specific antidotes to different uh, afflictive emotions, such as attachment and hatred. But those antidotes are partial, right? Just like we talked about. If attachment is your real problem, and you apply its antidote, such as repulsiveness of things, while well, now you succeed in overcoming attachment, but that is not going to necessarily help with your impatience and your jealousy and other things. Now you have to have other antidotes, isn't it? Whereas, if you find an antidote to the ignorance, because ignorance is the root afflict emotion from uh, which other afflict emotions arise, if you can knock off the ignorance, then you will be able to knock off uh, the attachment and anger and hostility altogether, isn't it? So therefore, this is a very effective, uh, uh, effective approach. So antidote to get rid of the ignorance is what we call the comprehensive antidote. It, it's the antidote in totality of things, isn't it? Because with one, you do many things, right? Uh, knock off uh, many other uh, things. So, uh, Geshe-la said, we will stop there and we welcome your questions. And uh, I think the traveling might okay, be a bit of a bit of a bit I just want to make sure that I understood this. At the top of page 205, mm -hmm. when you were talking about Nagarjuna's auto commentary, mm -hmm. and then you said that you were trying to, Geshe-la had a quote, a beautiful quote that mm -hmm. you couldn't say well in English. Right, right. So that was in praise of? Uh, in intimate. praise of dependent rising. Okay. And, and, that, yeah. and, that, and that quote is from? Okay. Yeah, what called in praise of. Sometimes they translated in praise of relativity or something. I think Bob Thurman did it, if I recall it, ages ago. But it's called tended to Yeah, but Lama Tsongkhapa. Okay. And and then praise of dependent origination. And then you said also that um, all of Buddha's teaching is mm. either implicitly or explicitly dealing with yes. Buddha trying to teach. Yes. Was that included in that quote from Tsongkhapa? Okay. Yeah. Or in, <coughs> that, in that quote <coughs> of, in praise sure. of dependent origination? Sure. Uh Yes, again, once more, Gishala quoted the stanza from Tendel Teba. So it's in the Tendel Teba. He said something like, roughly, if I translate it, uh, whatever you have taught, me, you meaning the Buddha, you know, that's based upon the dependent arising, but it's Samut Pada. So you did that in order to help beings to be, uh, to, to, to attain Nirvana, you know, to have the peace in Nirvana. Should you mean? So that's the only job you have. So basically, Buddha wants to lead everybody to the state of nirvana. And the only way he could do that is uh, either explicitly or implicitly demonstrate the emptiness or the absence of intensive reality. So it's Thank from Tendutaba, yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah, you're welcome. I have to do a pass to. <coughs> Thank you for this morning. This is my first time okay. in this environment. Sure. My question is, in a, in a society where the dominant discourse, where, mm -hmm. where there are dominant beliefs mm -hmm. in what you call, I believe, intensive reality, yes. how does one begin balancing? Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. the culture, uh -huh. we must yes. balance. Right. In that, in, okay. in professional okay. uh, work, because you know we need a roof over our head. Sure. How does one begin to balance mm -hmm. that okay. with sure. in, within a sick culture? Okay, sure. Well, I'm 
um, so what Geshe-la says is, uh, no, actually, <coughs> uh, maybe uh, because you said you are here for the first time and the language we use could be <laughs> like, might throw you off or whatever case may be, when we talk about intensive reality, the absence of intensive reality, you know, what are we really talking about here? And uh, you're right that uh, I mean, the whole society, in a sense, we can say that generally that we have this belief in the intensive reality. And then you said, you know, how do we keep a balance, we have to still function, we have to relate to each other, all of those things. Uh, but Gisela says, say, you know, yes, we do have that belief system, but it's much better for us uh, to accept uh, uh, the law of uh, relativity, you know, interdependent origination. He thinks that actually fits better with today's world, isn't it? Because we are all interconnected. Uh, and uh, this, uh, the, uh, the, um, and this principle of uh, relativity or dependent rising is actually, I mean, many scientists are now kind of agreeing with that because according to their experimental tests, many causes and conditions assemble together to produce a result, isn't it? There is no such thing as a single cause can produce something else, isn't it? So that means in order to have an outcome, we have to create its necessary causes and conditions. So that is an accepted uh, I mean, principle, right, the law in the society, even the scientists, you know, who's supposed to be very objective, they agree that, uh, you know, uh, to bring things out, the necessary causes and conditions must be created, assembled, and then it produces it, isn't it? So when we talk about intensive reality, what we're talking about is uh, that things exist without need for causes and conditions, without need for anything else, something that can exist in and of itself, right? So such a reality does not exist at all, and even scientists are today pointing at it, there isn't such a thing, you know, because if we look at the external phenomena, other things, everything is interconnected, interrelated, cause and, uh, cause and effect relationship, right? That's what we are talking about. The absence of intensive reality is very much to do with uh, the cause and effect relationship, you know? So that's what he feels. Yeah. Yeah. Any other thoughts? Yeah, uh, let me, yeah. Well, I have a question of my own, but also um, to, to clarify her question. Um, does it mean that Geshe agrees with the, the uh, premise of her question that this, somehow in this society, mm -hmm. that was my understanding, mm -hmm. there is greater grasping at intrinsic existence? Mm -hmm. uh, that, that, that could not be the case, since even the animals have the same, mm -hmm. even, even more grasping at mm -hmm. intrinsic existence. So it has nothing to do with society. Mm -hmm. okay, okay, yeah. I'll this word. Condition 
ตันเสียกินดิตันนะเนี่ยยูบูบูจิกชอบเนี่ยนี่ดิบจิกชอบมาตัวจิกคนน่ะทุกตัวรังจัดเพื่อมาดิเรมินดูลาวอร์วะโ
it would not even appear to the mind of the Buddha. Uh -huh. So how could he emanate another woman? Okay. So that's your real question, right? Okay, well, I'll get that to you. Yes. Getting back to it. <laughs> あ、で、で、今ね、たたけ、ペナ、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で
people, you know, individuals who function, who live, mm -hmm. are those conventional mm -hmm. existence? Mm -hmm. Okay. Alors, that's also again, Kangsa say, Kangsa in some of the Munzinji or Wagan. A D, Kunzabichu, the Kares or Wagan. That Kansa in a legacy or record to Tunjuni or Wagan. Kansa in some bagata, Zimbasso Marwagan. A D, 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 So I have a prayer request, so I'll uh, we will stop there today. Um, uh, we've been asked to pray for John Harrison Knight, um, who passed away um, on the January 12 at age 94. Uh, and uh, so please uh, uh, pray for him and others. <coughs> Papa Mendo, something with the local of Jukov Shire, the wagon, I live with John Shalom, the John Knight Salon. Sanjay Gunjir, Abdon, you and then Dumbo, Prince of Saint Jesus, Saint Joe, what about the Lord, Sons, the Omani Pemel, Omani Pemel, Omani Pemel, Omani Pemel. We'll do the prayers in Tibetan, in, then English, and then Vietnamese. Kange Lode, Dimye Dinda, Ninda, Namda, Rasa, Shinye, Dago, Shinye, Shinye, Nye, Tuwa, Lebom, Zen, Kanda, Sibye, Tura, Maru, Mendon, Dunge, Jise, Ven, Rudo, Kala, Boje, Yala, Duju, Yang, Den, Son, Ruda, Shiro, Nye, Mo, Nye, Leje, Chato, Tunze, Che, Mare, Mishire, Dunge, Nye, Jinye Send